ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the Valve Time News. Each week, we'll bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. Now, the news. Gabe Newell returned to Reddit earlier this week to fulfill a promise he made back in January. Previously, Gabe agreed to take part in an Ask Me Anything event on Reddit should the Heart of Racing charity drive, pardon the pun, surpass $500,000. Shortly after the milestone was met and announced on the Heart of Racing website, Gabe revealed his AMA would begin at 1pm Pacific Standard Time on March 3rd, 2014. Unfortunately, Gabe failed to make an appearance for the first time around before then reappearing the following day to announce the start of a larger scale AMA which would not only involve himself but other key Valve employees Eric Wolpaw, Eric Johnson, Ido Magal, and Greg Coomer. This new AMA began at 2pm Pacific Standard Time on March 4th and surprisingly enough didn't just focus on spamming Gabe and the others with constant repetitive jokes or queries about Half-Life 3. During the event, Gabe spoke with the Reddit community on a massive number of different topics, including Steam Greenlight, Linux compatibility, possible Spotify support for Steam Music, and Gabe's own personal hobbies, which includes machining and motorsports, of course. Other, much larger talking points were also discussed during the event, including how increasing the productivity of content creation and user-generated content is currently Valve's biggest focus for the Source 2 engine, how a Linux version of Counter-Strike Global Offensive is currently in development with an unknown ETA, and why Valve continues to remain silent and secretive about the development of Ricochet 2, even though we know it's on the way. For those who may not be aware, Gabe has regularly used Ricochet 2 as a disguise while discussing Half-Life 3, a notion which was further enhanced as he reiterated how Valve doesn't wish to announce or discuss upcoming projects years ahead of time in order to avoid missing agreed release dates, something which has let the community down in the past. Elsewhere in the AMA, Gabe responded to a query regarding Dota 2's currently unannounced International 4 tournament which has rumored to take place in July of this year. While Gabe noted that nothing has been particularly finalized regarding the International Four, it is likely the event will be held at the Key Arena in Seattle, a basketball stadium capable of housing up to a maximum of around 17,000 seated spectators. Weirdly, Gabe announced that he would be taking a break for a short period before returning to find out which questions had been upvoted. Now, well over four days after this message, Gabe still hasn't returned. We're not entirely sure if the AMA is actually over yet, but we have included a nicely formatted PDF with all the currently submitted responses in our full write-up on ValveTime.net, which you should definitely check out if you want to stay up to date with everything discussed during the event. The write-up and the PDF will be added to the video description as links alongside links to everything else we're talking about this week. A new update to Counter-Strike Global Offensive this past week introduced the first themed sticker capsules. The two new capsules known as Legends and Challengers are both themed after the upcoming ESL 1 Catalyst tournament set to begin on Tuesday, March 13th. Each capsule contains various logos themed after the event itself and the team set to compete for the $250,000 prize pool. Both capsules are classified as lockless and can be opened without purchasing a key from the CSGO store, but there is a catch. The capsules themselves cannot be found via random drops and must be purchased from the store instead of a key. However, proceeds from each capsule sale will be equally distributed to the teams and players featured within them. The update which introduced the capsules also featured a small number of miscellaneous bug fixes and map tweaks to Mirage, Overpass, and Dust 2. If you're looking to learn more, we highly recommend checking out the announcement blog post on the CSGO website and the official changelog. In merchandise news, tabletop game publisher Cryptozoic Entertainment recently revealed a Portal-themed board game currently referred to by the work-in-progress name of Portal Uncooperative Cake Acquisition Game. While details regarding how the game will be played are relatively limited at this point, we do know that the board game is designed for between 2 to 4 players and will be released in the final few months of this year for around $50. After the game was revealed at the International Toy Fair a few weeks ago, Polygon have come to learn that the concept of the game actually originated from within Valve rather than Cryptozoic Entertainment. The project was developed within Valve's walls for a year before they attempted to approach Cryptozoic in early 2013, who helped to lend additional expertise and to add a final layer of polish. The core mechanic is reportedly unique and compelling, as Valve hoped the concept will appeal to not only Core Portal fans but also to anyone else who plays the board game for the first time. As Valve's first officially licensed board game, we'll be sure to provide more details about the game should we learn more prior to the launch later this year. On Friday of this week, the fine folks over at TF2Maps.net revealed their latest themed custom content pack created by forums user eArkham and Cinnamon. 
The new pack, known as the Japan Content Pack, contains various models, textures, and particle effects themed around classic Japanese architecture. All of the assets included within the pack can be used to create custom Team Fortress 2 maps within the Hammer Editor and to create scenes inside Source Filmmaker. The pack is currently entirely custom content not yet featured in the game, but we imagine it might catch Valve's eye rather soon should it attract the same sort of buzz given to the previously released construction and swamp packs created by TF2Maps.net, the latter of which was included in the game with the release of the Mountain Lab map in 2010. However, while you probably won't see the contents of the map pack included in any official map anytime soon, a new King of the Hill and Arena map known as Suijin was released as means of showing off how the different models and textures can be used to make stunning and visually unique levels for Team Fortress 2. The map, created by forum user Cinnamon, is currently available for download on the official announcement page over on the TF2Maps.net website. After posting about the Japan content pack on our front page, Nick and John got together with some of the TF2Maps.net staff and fans from both communities on Saturday afternoon to check out how the new custom map plays. I'm told the event was a lot of fun, but I actually wasn't invited, thanks Nick, and staff from both sites are looking to try and collaborate again sometime in the future. If you took part in the event, be sure to leave a comment below to let us know if you enjoyed it and if you think we should run similar events in the future. And that brings us to the end of another relatively quiet week of Valve news. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest content and news from both Valve and Valve Time. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and to visit our community forums to get involved. We would also appreciate if you could give our Dota 2 announcer pack a quick thumbs up over on the Steam Workshop. Thanks for watching and bye for now.